MCU shows haven't been great. That's no secret. WandaVision dropped the ball hard in its final episode, and while it had great setup, the payoffs were really bad. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was an improvement, but everybody on the entire planet hates it for some reason. Loki was good in its second half, but its first half was really nothing special. What If was terrible, except for the Doctor Strange episode and the first Ultron episode. So after Hawkeye, I made a promise. I promised myself to not get excited for any MCU show ever again. Because I knew that no Marvel show could surpass my expectations. But then the Moon Knight trailer dropped. I got excited beyond reason. I was way too hyped for the show. So what did I think? Is this the MCU show we've all been waiting for? Is this the long awaited masterpiece that finally surpasses my expectations? Let's review every episode in order to find out. Spoilers for Moon Knight by the way. Episode 1 was amazing. It was exactly what I expected. The show was marketed as a really dark show with a lot of blood and that's exactly what it is. I feel like they could have gone a bit further with the blood though. In the opening for example. The whole point of the dark opening was to let the viewer know that this show was gonna be different. So I think it would have been better if we saw some blood when the villain puts on his shoes. But the show still contains way more blood than your average goofy MCU show. And that worked, because it made the show feel way more dark and mature than the other MCU shows. I also really love how the show catches your attention. Normal shows or movies try to catch your attention by making the main character likeable, but this show does it by raising questions. Why is this strange man surrounding himself with sand? Is there someone on the other side of the phone? Why did she just call him Mark? That's a very interesting and effective way to make the audience care. And I don't get why so little media use it. The mystery is handled very well and it gets a lot of focus. This episode also made me realize something. Oscar Isaac is an amazing actor. I just knew him from Star Wars and Dune and I didn't have any strong opinions about him. I thought he was just a pretty normal actor. But after seeing him in this episode, I realized that I was wrong. Oscar Isaac is a great actor. First of all, his accent tells a story. Isaac could have done a perfect British accent. But that's not what this is. I think Isaac didn't do a perfect accent because his character hasn't lived in London for his entire life. Oscar Isaac is so good in the show that when we saw Mark for the first time, I was convinced that he was an entirely different person than Steven. I also really enjoy the humor in this episode because it doesn't have as much jokes as other MCU shows. And the double avatar reference, oh my god I loved it! But this pilot also has some big problems. First of all, the CGI is... questionable. The monster at the end looked really bad. Just like the car chase scene. I liked the chase scene a lot until the CGI trees took me out of the experience. I also think that the pacing of the show is really weird. I like the slow pacing in the beginning, it gives us a lot of time to bond with Steven and the weird things he does. But then we arrive in the Alps and the pacing goes faster than light. It would have been so cool to see how an insecure guy who is afraid of waking up in other places would react to waking up in the fucking Alps. But no, we immediately have to run for our lives. I get that the point of the Alps was to introduce the villain and to show Steven out of his comfort zone. But I just wish that more time was spent on how he would react to being out of his comfort zone. After the car chase, the pacing gets a little better, but it's still not great. I also didn't enjoy the villain in this episode, mainly because there was no weight behind this introduction. He just randomly shows up, kills someone, follows Steven, and then he just chills there for a while. And he does all of that without showing any emotion, I don't get this villain. But hopefully he'll get better. So yeah, pretty good pilot, I'm looking forward to the next episode. This episode was worse than the previous episode. I don't get how a show with one of the most mature pilots could turn into a dull and forgettable mess in the next episode. But this show managed to do exactly that. Let's start with the stuff I liked. I liked the first 20 minutes. We actually get to see Steven react to being out of his comfort zone. And we also get some much needed development for Mark, the villain and Konshu. But that's kinda it. I really didn't care about Mark's wife. This is a prime example of show, don't tell. She constantly talks about the amazing adventures she had with Mark. How about you show us those adventures instead of vaguely bringing it up like 20 times per episode? But she might get better. 
it just needs a bit more time to get fleshed out. I also really don't get where they are going with the villain. Like in the first episode, the villain kills someone, and then he sends a big hound to hunt someone else. But in this episode, the show tries to sorta of redeem him by showing us that he improved lives of a lot of people. Oh, never mind, he's summoning jackals again. The show tries to make the villain likable and evil at the same time. Pick one. Just pick one. And can we talk about the summon scene again? Because holy crap, the CGI was terrible. Just like the fight scene with the jackal. There was no energy, no speed, just nothing cool. The choreography was so bad. But the thing that disappointed me the most was the relationship between Mark and Steven. That's because the show does the exact same thing with Mark as it did with the villain. On one hand, it tries to make Mark look like this dark killer, so that Steven has a reason to stay in control. But oh no, Mark was manipulated by the moon god, so it's not his fault. Bro, you can't make the audience agree and disagree with one of your main characters at the same time. Pick one! Just pick one! There were also a lot of plot holes. For example, why was this the first time that Steven was in the mirror? Like, they never explained why Steven could see what was happening, even though he wasn't in charge of the body. It usually blacks out when that happens. Why was this time different? The scene where Mark breaks the glass was really powerful, but I couldn't enjoy it because I couldn't stop thinking about this plot hole. The ending was also stupid. We're suddenly expected to care about Mark's undeveloped girlfriend because she will be the next moon god. Because she will be the next target of the underdeveloped moon god. I really hope they don't make the moon god the main antagonist, but I'm afraid that that's exactly what they're gonna do. He could have worked as main villain, but he's just so underdeveloped that it's really hard to take him seriously. I hope the next episode is gonna fix this mess. Episode 3 was better than episode 2, but worse than episode 1. It definitely improved on a lot of aspects, but there was still some stupid stuff as well. It was really interesting to see things from Mark's perspective. He was a character that I didn't care for in the first two episodes, which is pretty damn sad considering he's the secondary protagonist. But this episode made me sympathize and bond with him. I really liked the fight scene in the opening, and all of the personality switches were really cool, because we got to see them from both perspectives. I already had a feeling that Steven and Mark shared their body with someone else, and this fight scene pretty much confirmed that. It's pretty brave to set up a character just to give the audience more questions. But it was done really well, because it was clear that Mark and Steven had as much questions about the mysterious bloodthirsty third identity as we did. Mark's wife also got a little better. I don't think she's a three-dimensional character yet. If you want us to care about her dad, then show us her goddamn dad. But if they keep developing her every episode, then she will be a nice round character by the end. The problem is that she isn't a good character yet. I get that the show is focused on Steven and his relationship with Mark, but I think it's sad that her character development is so slow. So, Steven is a really cool character, Mark benefits from a lot of focus, Mark's wife, I mean Layla, also gets some development, Konshu uh, dies I guess, that's a good thing. He was the worst character in the show, because he was so one-dimensional. The only thing Konshu ever wants is to punish people. They took the word punish and made it into a character. But well, guess what Disney? That's not how you make a character. And if you want to make a character based around punishing people, that's fine. But make sure he has a character outside of that. Like Daredevil did with the Punisher. So after the fight scene, the show turns into an episode of Better Call Saul for like 10 minutes. Oh and by the way, I'm not gonna review the final season, because exams exist. And this court with the god sequence made me realize something. The cinematography of the show is really good. Which is rare for something in the superhero genre. Don't get me wrong, it's not the Batman good. But it's still really good. The colors pop and every shot at least tries to be creative. So our heroes lose the court with the gods and they go to... Uh, a place? Bro, I don't know, the whole sequence where they tried to steal a star map or something was so boring. I really didn't pay attention. But I do like this episode's ending. The time reverse sequence was sick. It made Konshu die, so that's great. The sequence also looked gorgeous. On to the next episode. Holy fuck, episode 4 was so damn great. It's good as hell. I can finally say that Lila is a good character. I like her relationship with both Steven and Mark. And that ending, holy crap that ending! But we'll get to it when we get to it. So, everyone goes to the tomb to fight for Emmett. It has all been leading up to this. So the focus is back on Steven, and well, it works. They give Mark a lot of focus, but it's clear that Steven is the primary protagonist. Lila and Steven got really close in the past two episodes, 
But I'm sure they won't do anything because of Mark. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, the kissing scene works really well because of how subtly it was set up. It really makes you think. Maybe Mark didn't invade Steven's life. Maybe Steven invaded Mark's life. Because after all, Mark had a real life. Steven didn't. Layla's relationship with Steven is pretty damn great. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about Layla's relationship with Mark. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but it lacks a lot of focus and development. Like, I really wasn't invested in Layla's father, because he didn't even appear in the show. Like I said previously, a prime example of show, don't tell. I also wasn't a huge fan of the underdeveloped monsters guarding the tomb. And that's it, I think some of Layla's relationship were a little underdeveloped. And I didn't like the monsters that had less than a minute screen time. Those are my only complaints for the entire episode. The kissing scene was incredible, as I said. Mark and Steven's relationship also got much better. It really feels like these two broken men are stuck to each other. Because Mark got so much development in the previous episode. I also loved the drowning sequence. It reminded me of the view from halfway down. Do you know how big of a compliment that is? And the ending, holy shit the ending. Like I said in episode 1. This show uses questions to get the audience interested. And holy crap, it works! I haven't been more hyped for something since Endgame. Wow, well done Marvel. Yeah, episode 5 is the best episode of the entire show. It's a mix of Hollow Mind from Owl House and The View from Halfway Down. Is it as good as those episodes? No, but that's pretty hard because those are two of my favorite episodes of television ever made. This episode is genius. It completely changes how I view Mark as a person. His backstory was really compelling. And all of our questions were answered in really cool ways. And we got some great payoffs to setups in earlier episodes. Unlike one other MCU show. But let's start at the beginning. So episode 4 ended in a really weird way. Steven wakes up in a psychiatric hospital. And for a moment you think, wait. Is everything we just saw just Steven's imagination? And that's so cool. It's an amazing way to show how confusing it is to have mental issues without disrespecting or making fun of them. It would also leave a huge impression on the audience, because what kind of show has the balls to pull something like that? It would also end Steven's character arc the perfect way, by literally making him face the reality and himself. He has to accept that everything wasn't real. He has to accept Mark. That would have been the best ending to a show ever. But unfortunately, no, that's not what happens. Don't get me wrong, I love this episode as much as the next guy. But if Steven had really woken up in a psychiatric hospital, I would have freaked the fuck out. Instead we find Mark, a meet up with his hippo thingy. So Mark and Steven have to make a scale balanced, as all things should be, to get to the afterlife. And to do that, they have to revisit Mark's old memories and secrets. But they won't be able to get into the afterlife if they're too late. I really like that they make the feeling of threat and urgency so strong, that it doesn't feel out of character for Mark to share his deepest secrets. In between these flashbacks, we cut back to Steven in therapy, but we'll get to that. I'm not gonna talk about each flashback, I'm only gonna talk about the most important one. So Mark's mom is abusing him because he's the reason that his brother died. So Mark is vibing in his room when one of the best twists in the MCU happens. And holy shit, I didn't see the twist coming at all. Mark is the original, he made Steven up. That's so goddamn perfect. Mark got more important as time went on, but I wasn't expecting this. It completely changes how we look at these characters. Mark isn't the intruder from the beginning anymore. He's the most important character. It also makes us sympathize way more with Mark. He always had Steven under control until a few weeks before the events of this episode. We never really cared about that, because well, we were supposed to root against him, right? But now we finally understand how terrible it must have been for this broken man to lose the only part of his life that he still had left. I now also realize that Lila represents Mark's life. He had her right where he wanted her until Steven came along. It really plays with our perception of main character. After the scene, we get a conversation between Mark and Steven. And I gotta say, wow, this is the best scene of the episode by far. This short argument a dude has with himself is a fucking masterpiece. First of all, the scene was set up perfectly because both Steven and Mark have clear motivations and well established characters by this point. So it really looks like these two broken men are having the fight of their lives about what it means to be real and how lies can destroy people. When in reality, you're just watching a dude talk to himself. 
I also love the message that this theme conveys. Everything has two sides. I'm so glad that this theme is mentioned in the show, because I associate Moon Knight with this theme. Everything has two sides. Both Mark and Steven fully believe that they're right, but both lack perspective. And after this brutal argument, we got back to Steven's therapy. And this sequence is just painful to watch. It completes Steven's character arc in a perfect way, by literally making him face reality and himself. He has to accept that everything wasn't real. He has to accept Mark. Remember when I said that we should get more time to see Steven react to being out of his comfort zone? Yeah, this is why. This scene only works because of the setup and Oscar Isaac. They're both absolutely perfect. We get to see Steven react to being out of his comfort zone on a completely new level. But the writers are not done yet. Not done with us, and not done with Steven. Yeah, that hurts, man. In the beginning of the show, Steven represented the audience, because we had as much questions as him. But in this scene, Mark represents the audience. We feel as much guilt and pain as him. And we miss him. We really do. And that's how the episode ends. The murderer got to go to the afterlife, and the harmless broken man didn't. Holy shit, this ending was almost as gut-wrenching as the view from halfway down. Huh. Wait, the show is not over yet? Episode 6 was on the same level as episode 3, and that's kinda weird. The show could have perfectly ended after 5 episodes, and it would have been a better finale. So this episode kinda feels useless. I'll start off positive. I really like the first 20 minutes. The gods got punished for not believing Konshu, and I really like how Leila doesn't become Konshu's new avatar. Of course she wouldn't want to be possessed by the thing that destroyed the love of her life. But the best part of this episode by far is the relationship between Mark and Steven. Mark had to accept that Steven was a part of him and he cannot live without him. So it was really cool to reward them with life when they were reunited. They couldn't live without each other, so they only got to live when they got back together. But that's also where the problems start, I don't think the moment was really earned. Episode 5 was so damn great that it feels really weird that this episode just takes away the most important part of the previous episode, confronting morality. After the boys return to the living world, everything kinda goes to shit. So they rearrange their deal with Konshu. Oh yeah, Konshu is back. Wow, that's so cool. Everyone loves him. Woohoo! Yeah, I still really don't like him. The episode tries to make Emmett a dark foil to Konshu, and don't get me wrong, I think that's a great idea, because it forces Konshu to look at the flaws of his philosophy. But then the only thing they do is fight. Why? You could have at least tried to make Konshu a more interesting character, by making him show an emotion. Just one would have been fine. But no, he stays the same underdeveloped CGI monster, which is a shame, because he had a lot of potential, especially in the final battle. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I can't find a single thing that I liked about this final battle. First of all, Leila becoming the avatar of Taberet came out of fucking nowhere. I liked that she wanted it to be temporary, because she saw what can happen to people who are avatars of a cruel god. But still man, I understand why setting this up must have been ridiculously hard. One of the most important parts of her character is that she hates the gods because of what I did to Mark. So how are you gonna set up that she will form an alliance with the thing she hates most? Well, just don't. Don't make her an avatar. It goes against everything she stands for. I do like her pseudo. I already said I don't like Konchu in this episode, but man, I really don't like his fight with Emmett. This is actually a perfect example of how to not do stakes. Let me explain. So Moon Knight and Leila are fighting Harrow, 
while Konshu is fighting Amit, and I get what they're going for with this end battle. The fight on the ground is supposed to be the personal fight to reunite two lovers and to defeat the villain for once and for all, while Konshu and Amit have a higher stakes fight for the fate of the world. It's been done many times and it usually works. But here is the thing, Emmet needs Harrow's staff to get the souls to grow bigger. And Harrow is also the key to defeating Emmet by doing the ritual. So the stakes in the Harrow fight are way higher. If Emmet wins, what do you think he's gonna do? Help Harrow, right? He needs Harrow for the souls. So he's gonna help Harrow. But that only proved my point. If Harrow wins, then he will get Emmet's souls, both fights will be lost and the fate of the world is sealed. Do you get what I mean? Usually the personal fight is cool because of how well personal it is. And the big fight in the background is usually cool because of the high stakes. But if you take those high stakes away, you're just left with forgettable noise. So if you want to make a personal fight and a background fight happening at the same time, make sure your background fight gets the bigger stakes. So yeah, pretty mid episode to end on, not gonna lie. I did like the ending though. The psychiatric hospital represented Mark's doubts of reality, but he finally realizes that those doubts aren't reality, so he goes back to the real world. I also think that it was really fucking cool to only show Jake, Mark's third personality, in the post credit scene. I love how the reason that he exists is left up to interpretation. I personally think that Mark made him up to make killing easier. Easily one of the coolest post credit scenes in the entire MCU. This was a really unique show. It had some great writing and a legendary score. Oscar Isaac gives the performance of his life, and Ethan Hawke... Uh, doesn't? Yeah, I don't like his performance in the show. He didn't show any emotion. But sometimes, the show becomes a childish mess that doesn't follow its own rules. It's hard to believe that the creators of episode 5 also made episode 2, but it's still the best MCU show. I think. Bro, I don't know, this is the longest review I've ever made. Give me a break. 6.5 out of 10, pretty good. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about this scene. Egypt, we gave you a superhero, no problem. Now buy our products. I just want to give you guys an update on where I'm taking this channel next. So I made a Patreon. If you want to support me, that's possible now. You don't have to if you don't want to, of course. I won't be uploading anything in the next two weeks because exams exist. And after that, I'm probably gonna take a bit of a break because I'm getting pretty burnt out. Then after that, I'll be making videos again as much as I can. Okay, bye bye.